Well, hello everybody. Welcome to day six of our 40 day challenge. So just to review very quickly, we, re we did a, a few strategies. Number one, protein each meal. How much protein? If you're a man, that's three containers over the course of a day. If I were you, I'd spread that protein through about four or five meals. Just easier to do that. If that's uh, not feasible for you, then have one container breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, if you're a woman, two containers. Now, does it depend on the size of the individual? Sure. We talk more about that in the UTC where we break out what we call the, um, the body color system. We base that on ectomorph, endomorph, mesomorph. I'm just giving you guys a, a very brief, you know, overall picture. So just to be safe, if you're a guy, three protein containers. If you're a woman, two protein containers. And again, this is not the end all be all. I'm giving you guys guidelines. Do what I'm telling you to do, see what the results are. And many of you have already begun to send me, wow, I can't believe what happens when I just, <clears throat> when I just add protein, <clears throat> what, what the effect is on my blood glucose when you eat. Well, we're just getting started. The second thing was fiber. The third thing was resistant starches. So that's just simply making it cold. And there are other tricks to resistant starches where you can do things if you wanna get real nerdy where you take it in and out of the refrigerator. So say something like rice, if you put it in the refrigerator overnight, take it out, leave it on your counter for a few hours, let it come through room temperature and then put it back into the refrigerator, it becomes more and more resistant, believe it or not. Um, and like I said, you can heat it back up. It does remain resistant. You don't have to eat it cold, but uh, anyway, just a little bit more nerdy stuff. Before I go into the fourth tip, I want to clarify something because there's a narrative from a lot of you who are reporting with your blood glucose where it's fairly high. Um, and you're saying things like, I don't eat sugar. <laughs> Guys, let me be very clear. Insulin resistance is not the result of you eating sugar or carbs for that matter. Refined carbs doesn't. It's not the result of you eating anything in particular. It's the result of you overeating food over time. It's the result of, of literally getting fat. It, now everybody's personal thre fat threshold is different. I covered these things in the past, so I'm not going to cover it here. but. Just to be clear, the, the result of overeating anything, okay, is going, is what's causing the insulin resistance over time. Okay, so if you're finding that your blood glucose is high, stop telling me that you don't eat sugar. It, it does, now, how does eating sugar and refined carbs contribute to the problem? We also covered this. Let me cover it again very, very quickly because it will make complete sense to you. If you know that your metabolic rate, let's just say on a day that you exercise, the end of the day, you expended 3,000 calories, which would be a lot of calories. If 1,000 of those calories came from sugar, for example, you only have 2,000 calories left to get your vitamins, minerals, and macronutrients, mainly protein, right? We, we've, so if sugar is carbohydrate, and I've been explaining to you how important protein is and how important certain fats are in previous UTC, uh, excuse me, previous 40 day challenges, you've now relegated, you've taken away a third of your calories and devoted it to sugar, which has n no minerals, no vitamins, right? You're not getting the protein that you need. You're not getting the, the fats that we've talked about, namely omega-3s. So how are you going to get that into your body when you're devoting X amount to sugar? It also has consequences over time, which we've talked about for 18 years, on your apostat, meaning you're going to want to eat more of it. Okay, but in and of itself, it has nothing to do with insul insulin resistance, meaning like if you gave it to a, a human being in a cage and you controlled what he ate, and you just relegated his sugar, if you made a third of his calories sugar all day, every day, and you made sure that he didn't overeat his calories, he wouldn't gain weight. He wouldn't become in insulin resistant. So I wanna be clear on that. 
All right, so let me, and I'll continue to answer questions like this over time, but the, the more I kind of, that's why we're doing this for 40 days, I'm trying to save some of the other stuff for kind of later on. So let me get to our, was it our fourth, our fourth tip for blood glucose. Our fourth tip is along with each meal, try to add some fat. What, what fat have I harped on the most over the years? Here it is, everybody. Extra virgin olive oil. You've heard me talk about oleic acid. You've heard me, heard me talk about extra virgin olive oil and the quality of olive oil. So in the back here, you see this symbol right there? That symbol right there, right there. You wanna look for that symbol. You, you know, you'll notice all these other symbols, okay? But this particular olive oil, this California brand, trust me, I've done my research. A lot of olive oils are canola oil. It's a whole bunch of canola oil and some olive oil. And canola oil sucks. We've talked about linoleic acid in the past. If you want to mess your body up, consume a lot of linoleic acid. You need some linoleic acid, but we overeat linoleic acid, which is an omega-6. And I'm telling you, a lot of olive oils have linoleic acid in them, an abundance of linoleic acid because it's canola oil. Olive oil has some linoleic acid too, but look at the differences between extra virgin olive oil and canola oil. It's a huge difference. But olive oil, we've talked about oleic acid in the past. I've done challenges with you guys where I said, go ahead and put extra virgin olive oil on everything you eat and tell me if you gain any weight. Here's the deal, guys. Not only will it blunt your insulin response, the, the health benefits and the, the how satiated you feel after you have things like olive oil will become abundantly clear if you are implementing it into your food each day so that you can put it on your eggs, you can put it on your meat, you can put it on your salads. There's, you'd be shocked at how many things extra virgin olive oil goes with. If you want to use other forms of fat, Go ahead and have some pumpkin seeds, some walnuts, some pistachios. Mix up your nuts, mix up your seeds. Um, those are all great forms of fat. Egg yolks are great forms of fat. So to, to say it one more time, protein, plenty of it. Fiber, each meal. I want most of you to aim for close to 40 grams or certainly aim to increase it. Try to add resistant starches, so coming out of the refrigerator. You can cook it if you want, it will stay resistant. <clears throat> Four is make sure you add fat to each meal. I'm a big fan of extra virgin olive oil. Have some nuts, have some seeds, have some egg yolks. All those fats that are in the UTC manual you will see as well uh, um, in terms of those are, all, those are all fine, mix them up. Okay, so, but definitely check out the extra virgin olive oil, start adding that in and see what effect it has on your blood glucose and your satiation over time. All right, everybody, have a great rest of the day.